thing we're in. I'm I'm just going to preface this episode by saying that um, this is the first day in a few days that I haven't sounded like a bassoon every time that I talk, and it's still pretty bad. So we're going to keep this one kind of short, just in deference to me continuing to be able to talk. And you think allergies? I believe it's allergies, yeah. You know, it's weird, though, like two years ago or even a year ago, I had been freaking out and, like, taking a COVID test every five minutes or whatever. And this year, I'm kind of not, in part because I don't have any other symptoms at all. I'm just, you know, I don't even have a sore throat. I just have yeah. laryngitis. I don't really get uh, allergies anymore. They're, I didn't get them as a kid. And yeah. they absolutely blasted me for about 10 years. Yeah. Where, like, eyes are, can't even open my eyes. And then now I think they're gone again. Just by like our trees and shit. Right. Yeah. I had a um um a period that was really bad um sometime in my forties, uh, where we had torn down a shed in our backyard and there was just like a huge cloud of of dry mildew, is yeah. really what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. And it and I it super sensitized me to it. And so I I've all kind of always had urine allergies, but it was really bad then and I ended up, you know, taking so many allergy drugs and and like it gave me a kind of a, a, like reactive airway like asthma but not really asthma uh i i was paying 75 bucks a month for drugs in just copays yeah not even the full cost right. of the drugs plus i was taking allergy shots yeah and it helped or not really it did ultimately help the al- allergy shots ultimately helped part I, part of my issue too at the time was i was having like gastric reflux at night because i had sleep apnea and when that calmed down yeah with cpap a little compounding yeah it was a bad combination of circumstances that's not what's going on this time i don't know i don't know i just i woke up friday morning last week and just had less of a voice yeah allergies can fuck people up bad and we do have a shit ton of trees yeah and like the weather's changing quick like mornings are already like 40 50s yeah yeah it's starting to get chilly City of Trees, that's what we used to call ourselves before we got all bougie and started calling ourselves Farm to Fork. Yeah, did they change that, you think, because of the weed connotation? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. That's what I always assumed. And it was always like a half joke. Oh. But then I wondered if the city didn't like that. Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. Because no. City of Trees is a better... Yeah, it's a great slogan. It's a great slogan. It is, it's more reflective of where, where we are here in Sacramento, California. And marijuana is legal now, so you'd think it would be like, oh, who cares? Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you're like a fucking brewery town in yeah. Idaho or something, you call yourself like City of Brew or something. Yeah, yeah, it seems exactly. cool. Yeah, that makes sense to or me. Or the Brewers, is the that brewers. up here with beer? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that Milwaukee Brewers yeah. has, has beer. Yeah, for fucking the High Life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the the Miller High Life. That's their <laughs> living that Miller High Life. Yeah, that's their step down. Uh, I watched. Is it this weekend? Last weekend? I don't know, dude. I think I was telling uh, Barton Geo this is the fastest year of my life. I think. Really? I think so. I can't argue with that too much. I don't think it's yeah. the fastest necessarily, but it's been it's gone pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not deep. It's definitely in there. The last three years have been the fastest. It makes me think that. I, it, I don't know if it's because a lot has happened, and so maybe it's because a lot has happened. We opened the gym and the pandemic, and all the timing felt weird for everybody for that. Yeah. But then it also makes me think about the movie Click, and Uh if it's on me that the world's moving so fast. Right. That I'm like, I don't know, though, because I feel like sometimes when you're really present, time moves fast. Because being sometimes when you're very present, I feel like time moves slow in the micro, fast in the macro. Okay. Right. Like, yeah. In the mo- yeah, yeah, yeah. The right. more the more details you perceive, the slower things. Yeah. Like if if you're on vacation and you're at Disneyland or something, you're really present, having fun with your friends and fun with everything. Like you're you're absorbed in the moment, so time's kind of chugging. But then when at the end of the day, you're like, "Fuck, that day went fast. I had so much fun." Yeah. Right. And like time flies when you're having fun is right, kind of right. true. But in the moment, you're you're feeling it. You're looking. Yeah. You're getting the different senses or whatever. So I don't know if that's the case in the last three years because so much shit's gone crazy. Or if it's more like Adam Sandler click or I'm not present and shit's moving fast that way because he's so fucking into his shit. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Either way. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, you're, oh. just, you're not recording it in exactly the same way as you would be normally. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But then, so what I, I, that was a total side tangent to say, one of these last couple of weeks, don't know which fucking weekend <laughs> it was, I watched the, uh, uh, powerlifting pro 
Is it American Pro that just happened? There's yeah. so many pros now. I don't know the fucking names. Yeah, yeah, the one, the one that Joe uh, Sullivan was lifting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it made me think of, um, and even at our meet, we were talking about uh, the diversity, both ethnically or whatever. We don't have to go down that route, but that it is true um, in powerlifting compared to what it used to be. And I was mm-hmm. thinking about um, the type of lifter in terms of like athletes where like baseball is a cool one. Basketball is kind of like that too. Football a little bit where you're like, Oh, I like so-and-so cause he um, has like this attitude or this swing or, Oh, you throw like so-and-so mm-hmm. where like powerlifting's a little bit more like that now where there's a variety of how people approach the bar, a variety of how people approach the sport. Um, not to segue too hard, but it is very segue into like the music that we're about to talk to, but like how, Back in the day, every big lifter's bashing their head against the wall. Every single one. Right. Right. They're fucking yeeting ammonia up their schnoz. They're getting slapped. Every big lift has that aspect to it. Where now we're seeing world records like Jamal's calm as a fucking clam. Yeah. You know, and that dude's pulling over a thousand pounds. Like he just pulled eleven hundred in the gym, which is absolutely I saw that. yeah, That's stupid. Craziness. Totally stupid. Uh, unfathomable for me. Um like, people talk about other numbers and stuff, like, oh, the first 1,000-pound squad or 800-pound well, Sumo bench. doesn't count, Those, though, but anyway, go on. Dude, <laughs> yeah, shout-out to Furman. I think he's the, the lightweight uh, world's strongest man. Um, he came out, and he's like, boy, we're just going to negate this guy because his hands are inside his legs. Like, <laughs> like, like he, he would, which is cool to see a strong man support a, a sumo pull because 1,100 pounds, who's the only other one who's done it? Eddie and Thor? Uh, yeah, moved that weight off like the that, ground? Yeah, yeah. And those guys literally weigh 200 pounds more than Jamal. Right. You know what I mean? And they might have, or they potentially were allowed to wear suits. Yeah. I don't know. Whether they did or didn't, I don't yeah. remember either. I don't think they did. Maybe Eddie did. I don't know. It doesn't really fucking matter. The point is that, that that's one of the numbers that actually blows my mind. Where like, I, I was in the room for the, you know, the Spoto 700 pound bench, which right. was like the second, you know, in history or third in history. Like, all oh, that's crazy. And you're like, oh, that's very strong. But 1,100 pound, like, pull and how he moved it is really stupid. Weighing whatever he weighs, 250. Yeah, absolute insanity. But the variety of lifter, back to that pro, the the meet was fun to watch. And even though I hate on powerlifting a lot, like I still keep up with it. And I'm still a fan, for lack of a better word. Um, both both ladies and gentlemen, the the amount of strength and talent is there is crazy. But the variety of approaches to a max lift or a world record or whatever uh, kind of started to blow my mind a little bit. Yeah. Which I think we're diving into with whatever study you may or may not have. <laughs> yeah. Um Let's take a just quick break right here. One day we'll have a, a live band. And we're back. That'd be awesome. I still think that it'd be really cool to do a meet where the music was provided by a live band. Because yeah. you can cut them in and out, right? You yeah. know what I mean? You can just be play part of a song. Yeah. Yeah, you just need a fucking... Who's the main guy? Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Jay Leno and everybody has their own musicians. But the guy I think that does... Dude, my memory is so bad now. Because I don't watch any TV. Uh, um, kind of a skinnier black guy. Um, He's an insane jazz musician. Hmm. Obviously, Jimmy Fallon has the roots. Right, I was going to say. And that's pretty cool. And the roots are great. I just saw him live. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But that dude's like an actually insane musician. Where I'm sure fucking the bald guy that was with Letterman or whatever is a fine musician. <laughs> I don't know anything about Oh, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul Schaefer. Yeah, yeah. Paul Schaefer, who is famously in the band in um, Blues Brothers. Oh. Uh, the first Blues In the Brothers. movie, though. Yeah, in the yeah, movie. Because yeah, yeah. he was the band leader for them on Saturday Night Live. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know his actual chops or not, but... Uh, he's he's a ranger and all that. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something in there. And same with Qu- uh, you know, Questlove. Questlove. Yeah, he's a good drummer. Is he the best of all time? Probably not, but he's good. Yeah. I saw them live, I don't even know how many months ago, because my time <laughs> line is fucked. Four months ago? Maybe? I-, I would say that, like, under the best of circumstances, you're a little bit challenged by the, the by noting the passage of time. No, it's like bad. How long it's been since whatever. Yeah, yeah, especially right now. I feel like I never used to be like that way. Now, yeah. I'm, like my whole life's a blur. So we've been podcasting together as of last month for 9 years. Yeah. But sometimes I know that we say 10 or I say you, 10 of like content. Yeah. We 10 of YouTube. content is true, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I say 10 of like content in general. Um and yeah, might as well round up 9 years of podcasting, 10 years of podcasting. Yeah, yeah. It's the same shit cuz we did yeah, we did YouTube or whatever it was. But yeah, before that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like 10 years I remember sitting uh 
in Cleveland. And I was like, fuck, dude, I got to, like, get a job or something. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try to make content my job. Yeah. I, like, remember sitting down thinking that somehow. And then fucking paying some attention to Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And now here we are. Um, I was going to save this, but I'll throw it out right now that we are within just a couple of episodes of having done more episodes of this show than we did the first show. We've certainly done That's more episodes of this show together than we did of the old show. And now we've, we're, we're going to have eclipsed it all together. That's interesting. Very soon. But less years. Oh, uh, less years because we're, we're doing, doing two. doubles. Yeah, doubles, yeah. We, we started doing two in a week almost a year ago. That's pretty wild, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, See, I don't know any of that. Yeah, although I think that in terms of like pure hours, it's probably less because we're not doing two and a half hour episodes. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I can't hang with any podcast for that long. I think anymore. I could uh, if the guest was in person and good enough. And no offense to our past guests or anything, but not yeah. a lot are in person. And yeah. also, before we get too far into the topic, next month we're going to take a little. I'm I'm committing to this now. I'm not a big commit to the to the commit to the bit early, but I'm going to commit to the bit early today and say. That next month we're going to talk a little bit about the tenth anniversary of the backyard meet of the century, which is, um, um, I I think we think like one of the turning points toward raw in the whole powerlifting world, the part the 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 rise of raw. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe the origin story of raw powerlifting. Yeah. Anyway. So if you have specific memories around that meet about how it maybe changed your training you had to have been hanging with us for or, and powerlifting for a, a while or if you're aware of the videos you're worried aware of exactly how deep um peep rubish was squatting back in that in that time um how many fucking random 800 pound pullers were just stomping around yeah shoot yourself over to our discord and leave us some comments about that and we'll we'll uh try to incorporate that into the process I don't think I competed at that one. Maybe I, I competed at one of them. I think it was that one. Maybe. Then. Yeah. And then the next one I didn't. I don't really remember. Yeah, I don't think you did the next one. Because we used to run, what, two meets? Uh, like three, spring? Uh, March, May, November. Three. Uh, yeah, I would always try to do like one or two a year. Yeah. And even that. Yeah, even that. Yeah, I I mean, back in the day I used to do, I, the, probably the most I ever did in a year was four. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's it's a whole lot. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of figured that out, and most people do like two. Yeah. Even at the high level, you kind of qualify for Nats, and then you'll do Nats, and then, you know, the v- very few will go on and do Worlds or whatever it might be. And then um, meets are full, too. Yeah. So they're, uh, that just is an indicator of how many more people are doing doing meets. That's why I wonder about all this pro stuff going on, which is awesome to see money, right? Because there used to be one money meet a year, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at the Arnold or something, and then and then like the Kern came about, and that was kind of like the big raw money meet, and then now there's Pro Series and the USAPL and the USPA, which is cool, but like, are there enough pros to have that type of circuit? And then like, what's the danger? Because this is a big conversation in all sports, right? Like, is the baseball season too long? Is the basketball mm-hmm. season too long? Can we help the injury rates? Um, can we help longevity of career in NFL if these running backs are having three year careers because they're getting bashed every Sunday? Like, how do we handle the minutes? basketball players are running on their knees etc cetera, etc cetera. and then now you have i'm making these numbers up but you have 20 pros in the uspa mm-hmm. but you have eight pro meets yeah like obviously they're going to want to go do it to make money it's the only way to make money right so if you want to be a full-time you know make money and yeah air quotes no it's pretty good i i think it's like 10k for you yeah know, i mean some, yeah. so if you're the guy and you're doing eight of them yeah but it, but the point is that it will be like social or economical pressure to do all eight of them yeah to make a living and so like is that healthy for the sport and then but you don't want to like dilute what it means to be a pro either right. so you don't want you know a hundred thousand pros even even the ifbb is pretty good at that although there's a ton of pros there's way more obviously um and they have the pro circuit that you gather points kind of like golf or some shit and you end up at the olympia um the standard to become pro is still difficult yeah like there's no pro with a shit physique it's still but there's obviously way more people competing in that than powerlifting. Mm-hmm. And it's not as, um, I mean, po- bodybuilding found a way to make it uh, not as segmented as fucking powerlifting. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's uh, not drug tested, so it, it does kick a lot of people out. But besides that, like the IFBB is the guy. It's the gold standard. That's a pro. Right. And we don't even have that in our sport. And so now you have multiple pros and multiple feds spread out, and you're trying to have a pro circuit. You know, there's just too many, there's just not enough people competing. I think that if, 
if powerlifting loses its traction and dies, it will be because of this I- IPF decision r- relative to the USAPL. It is interesting to see some people still <coughs> hunting down the powerlifting America route and the IPF route. Yeah. Which I guess, yeah, I mean, if you want to be a world champion, that is the way you have to go for now. Even though yeah. it seems the USAPL is trying to make their own way that way as well, right? I think they just opened meets in Korea uh, and open meets in Australia for the USAPL. So eventually, I assume they're going to try to create their own worlds. Yeah. And that might have the, the legs too, you know? If you have the, the, the Russ Wolves and the Sean Noriegas and all these big names in the USAPL here in America, which do push the culture. Mm-hmm. Everything's sure. culture-based, right? Right. If LeBron wasn't in the NBA, the NBA is not as cool anymore. Um so maybe that becomes a world too. I don't disagree with you, just because all of it's still so fucked up. You know, all the rules and all the fucking different deadlift bars and drug tested, non drug tested. Um, I mean, the USAP, USPA seems strong. Obviously, locally it's strong. We that's what we held here, and it was it was a great turnout, both of lifters and audience. And their pro series meet. You know, there's probably two thousand people watching it on YouTube when I was tuning in. So there, there's definitely legs there, but. It's still too segmented and too small that it's too small to be so segmented. Yeah, I agree with you. Right? Exactly. It's too it's too niche of a sport to have that kind of division. You need economies of scale. You need Yeah. You need to know you have competitors that are they're going to show up to these meets and like pay the meet entry fees and bring eyes to the to the um to these meets. I I I don't know. There's just not enough freaks to fill out pros, <clears throat> you know what right. I mean? Like the USPA, like the amount of like John Hacks an absolute animal, Jamal's an animal, Joe Sullivan's an animal. Like these guys are so strong, but there's not a hundred of them. Right. There's five of them. And I mean, it's not to say that you can't enjoy watching just anybody lift. Sure. But the excitement comes. Yeah, the money and the build up. Right from from watching top performers. I right. mean, every sport is like that. 100%. The excitement comes from top perform from watching top performers. <laughs> Excuse me for the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. It's just not, and, and in our sport, that's so black and white. It's hard to you don't have those comparables. For the NBA, you'll say you know people say stuff like us. Oh, so and so sucks. I'm like, dude, he's a starter in the NBA. Yeah, like, and he can score on LeBron. Like yeah. he, he he's not as good as LeBron. He's not as consistent. He's not maybe as athletic, but he can score on LeBron. Where in powerlifting, it's just not the case. You deadlift 700. Joe Sullivan squats 800. Yeah. We're just not. There's You're not no, in the same conversation. Yeah, that's not. It, Unless it, you can make it up somewhere, uh, you know, maybe right. you're deadlifting a that's thousand That's the pounds. only variable, right? Yeah, yeah. Like randomly you bench more. But yeah. the, the scheme of it, there's not that much variability within the competition. So it's just not the case. Your total is what your total is. And you're not going to gain 500 pounds overnight. No. Where randomly in the NBA, some random dude could just go off for 40 points. Because yeah. everybody is so talented. So that adds a whole nother layer to what this pro even means because again yeah the 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 standard is you gotta kind of got to be a world record holder Mm -hmm. and there's very few people gunning for that less than two per weight class right so yeah yeah, where's the interest in that chasing people or golf right there's hundreds of people that are pros and one guy could just have his miracle day and win. That totally happens. Yeah. G- maybe with golf more than anything Probably. else. Yeah, maybe like poker or some random yeah. sports like that. But it doesn't happen in powerlifting. Yeah. You could have your best day and then it's just your best day. It's not the game's best day. No, exactly. You don't – like the stars don't align for an average yeah, lifter. Can't. Even to, the best lifter. Yeah. Like John Hack's not going to come out and pull 1,100. Yeah. He had a really good day at this pro meet, and he, he I think he benched six, pulled over nine, which is absolutely insane. But he's not just going to wake up and bench on his quote-unquote best day, eat his Wheaties, and bench 800. No. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Uh-uh. We're in basketball, baseball, shit like that can happen. You can go on a crazy streak, which to me, obviously, as a viewer and as a participant, makes those sports more interesting. Um, but again, it all just layers down to... Yeah, how do we make these money meets worth it without injuring people, mm-hmm. without getting the same three competitors going head to head every single? Is, yeah, right. That's just like yeah, we're just gonna watch LeBron and Kobe play one on one every day. Yeah, that's not fun either. Yeah, um, Ali Foreman every time. Yeah, that's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, and then and then as as long as they are competing this frequent, their progress will probably slow. Yeah, and that's opposite to other sports too. Right, where you can get better by playing the game, you can't really get better in many aspects as a pro by competing you get better by training right in other sports you get better by playing yeah hence scrimmages 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You have to simulate game conditions as as to much get better as, as a game. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but lifting because, isn't necessarily like that. Yeah, because so much of it is um some of it's a, so much of it is about reps and so much of it is about the mental part of the game. Right. We're here you got to build muscle. Yeah, which takes got, fucking yeah, decades. Yeah, you can't you can't brain yourself into I know. you know a 200 pound PR. Otherwise I'd be much stronger. Yeah. <laughs> Strong brains. Yeah. Um so we want to talk a little bit today about uh the issue of music and its influence on performance. This uh I'm looking at an article from the National Center for Health Research. Thanks, Jenny. And and uh yeah, Jenny Markle. Thank you, Jenny. This is um I don't think this is a very recent article, but I will link it and you guys can look, read it and see what you think. There are some, there are a bunch of uh, citations at the at the end of it as well. Um talking about um whether or not music actually if influences performance and i i'm going to just out myself as somebody who finds people who need a pr song to be somewhat annoying and they have to you know they want it blasted and a lot of people it, it's not as obvious anymore because people are putting earbuds in or earphones or whatever and yeah. and and playing it um so that it's not impacting everybody else in their space uh cuz that boy Boy, God, did we used to have that. Um, and that that always annoyed me. I, you get tired of people's fucking songs, and you get, yeah. you know, their taste in music sucks, and they, they, it's all, like, it's all a hype video. I think a lot of it, at least from my perspective, um, jokingly or not jokingly, I'll call it, like, mentally weak, um, but even as a coach, I think, like, that arousal is uh, necessary to lift really heavy weights because you're tr- kind of playing a fear game. You know, yeah. you're playing like this fight or flight thing with yourself and the weight on the bar and your nerves. Um, but the truth is for, you know, 80% of your training, we probably don't even want to s- step into that realm. Um, right. A lot of time when I'm coaching, I'll have people really kind of save that to prep um, or obviously save it for meet day. And you and it is a skill in itself how to get yourself hyped up in a way. Um, and everyone does it different. Some people are happy hype. Some people are angry hype. Mm-hmm. Some people are calm hype. And that's kind of what I was talking about, the variability of these pro lifters and seeing how they approach the bar and, and really heavy weights or third attempts. But um, so it's a skill you probably need to practice at some point. But, yeah, practicing it every day for a set of five or a set of three um, probably isn't the best way. And I think that, well, I mean, you would look at West Side and you're maxing out. Right. That's part of the issue, I think. That's part of the issue. You're maxing out so often. Yeah. And you're Even though it's variations, everybody listens to the same shitty music for every, you know. Yeah. Well, and you don't, yeah, even more so because it's variations because you're, you're kind of scared. You're like, man, I got 100 pounds of band on here. I don't know if I could do this because I haven't done this in six months. Right. So then, yeah, it's more, even more reason to get hyped in a way, which maybe isn't healthy either. And yeah. again, going back to the old school powerlifting where everyone's bashing their head against yeah. the wall. Just because you saw one strong guy bash your head against the wall, you bash your head against the wall thinking it's helping her. I'm having someone slap my back, even though that may not be how you adjust or actually react well under pressure. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe you're a calm person, but you don't know it because everyone else around you is bashing their head. So you yeah. get what you got to do. Monkey see, monkey do. My third deadlift in my first meet, I had a uh, ammonia cap busted in front of my nose with really not out any any expectation for that yeah like any knowledge that it was going to happen i could barely see the bar when i got there i don't think it made any difference to me at all yeah i like a little ammonia on a deadlift just because of deadlift i don't gotta think as much maybe but and and sometimes you get a little more likely to get a little dizzy no for sure you get lightheaded uh, and your eyes can squint a little bit yeah if you're uh, like have too much you can't really see it kind of burns your eyes more than anything else and then, like, yeah, same idea. Like, if you're already screaming and you're listening to Metallica on full blast, like, is ammonia going to wake you up even more? Yeah. Are you sleeping? Yeah. If your nervous system has gone to sleep during this, all this yeah. other hype, then yeah. I can't help you. Yeah. I can't help you. You might need to talk about t- to doctor or about um, some other kind of legal stimulant. It's the same in other sports, too. You'll see, like, you know, football huddles of people getting hyped and shit. I- I've just always kind of been the calm guy. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, la- me I'm, too. Yeah, like, I communicate a lot in basketball because it's so important, but, like, and I'm kind of hyped in terms of my, like, energy, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not the raw, I've never been a raw-raw kind of guy. I've been more raw-raw as, like, a coach. Yeah. yeah you know. Yeah, but I think that's appropriate, Maybe. Though. Yeah. Yeah, because be- you're yelling, ho- hopefully something useful, or hopefully support, or... And if you're coaching somebody, there's a level, enough of a level of trust that they they trust your voice. Yeah. And they 
they trust that you believe that they can accomplish what you're saying. 100%. Yeah, in other sports, too, there's, like, cues. We just call it, like, communicating or talking. Yeah. But, like, yeah, there's cues in other sports, too, and that's just what I was raised doing. Again, because there's way more variables going on. Right. You're communicating way more, and it's more important than than big breath and up. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I don't think, I don't know, most most coaching cues don't really do much in – in meat performance, I don't think. Yeah, people are pretty blacked out when you're on a platform. But it's interesting that you don't find the music that important to your own lifting because you're a music guy. I love music. I think it's important for my mood. Oh, okay. But it's not important for like for a the lift. performance. Yeah, maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. like for my mood, I want to be in a good mood, and and like back in the day when I competed, I would listen to like reggae or R and B all morning because yeah. my nerves are already high. Yeah. So I just try to get like happy. And more calm music. And then, yeah, I'm listening to rap or something to get me, like, quote-unquote hype. But more of it is, yeah, just be in a good mood. I, I've done that with no caffeine, no competition. Uh-huh. You know, just, like, on a good morning, I'm taking a shower and good music's playing. I'm all of a sudden hyped. Yeah. But it's just because I, like, yeah, I am a music guy. But yeah. it could be anything, too. And that's the difference of, yeah, like you said, everyone's got to listen to just the one Metallica song. I'll play Aretha Franklin out here and be in a great mood and get yeah, a squat the, PR. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I am too. Like um, when I was working every Saturday, like I would pick a decade, yeah. and I would find a Spotify playlist and just let it run. Yeah. You know, seventies rock and eighties and nineties, and usually not the two thousands. But you a- know, eighties is the only music I hate. Really, I, I I don't know. I I graduated in high school in the yeah. '80s, so I'm 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 an '80s yeah. guy. It's not the best, but it's but there's some good stuff there. Yeah, I like Michael Jackson and Queen. That's about my '80s extent. That's it. Yeah. But and yeah, I, I'll listen to anything that makes me in a good mood. And I think of the Queen as being more '70s, the '70s, yeah. but that's just, I don't know. I could be wrong by that. Yeah, they're like that. half and half. Same yeah, with yeah. Michael, right? Like Michael's fucking every decade ever. Yeah, I remember being in a used clothing store in Hollywood when I heard uh oh hit his, his big breakthrough album and I think I think for the first time not bad ba- uh no uh because thrillers 80s it was it was pre thriller yeah. I think it may be bad baby bad yeah that might, it's like, that's like a mini plastic surgery yeah yeah not quite there yet. yeah did you see that picture where they age yeah, so him good. up yeah and tupac and yeah. yeah so good yeah it's like if what michael jackson would have looked like without the plastic surgery yeah. how, uh, how crazy is it how old would he be 60 uh jackson yeah it's probably a little older than that yeah that's crazy yeah if he were still around yeah or tupac tupac's like 55 or something yeah that's what makes me feel old knowing he died when he was like 24 uh, yeah, and I'm like, fuck, dude. That's a young if, kid. If if he really died, conspiracy theory. No, yeah, he's definitely on the Canary he's, Island somewhere. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? Yeah, That's I I heard this thing recently. I was another podcast I was listening to talking about how um, at the kind of top levels of 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 the rich. If you decide you want to disappear, it yeah, is totally sure. possible. Well, that's what they say about everybody. Yeah, fucking Hitler, Tupac. Yeah, a bunch of people are just off in Argentina. And I think that in the Patagonia that f- that feeds the conspiracy theories because it's kind of possible. No, it just sure. depends on how many people know. I think even if you're not famous, it's probably very possible. Uh, it's probably easier if you're not famous, but yeah, yeah but if you have true. the but money, e- yeah, either way, yeah, even a little bit of money though, you just need a flight. You can go find a flight to any like Central American or South American country. There ain't shit going on. But how do you fly not as yourself? You fly as yourself, but then you fucking... And you stage an accident. Yeah, you spread rumor, or you just stop answering everything, and people assume you're dead. Just like this week's uh, Game of Thrones. I didn't watch it. Uh, My ADHD's been worse than ever, I think. Really? So I can't like sit down and fucking zone it. Uh, You know, I don't love it, but I like it. I don't know. It's, you know, it's fine. There's a lot of coin flip whether that's better or the Lord of the Rings. <sighs> the Lord of the Rings is not as accessible, and I think I like it, but it's not as accessible because it's because um, you kind of have to know things to understand what's going on. Uh, and where Game of Thrones, technically, if you never watched Game of Thrones, you could still like you House could of Dragon. still sort of figure it out. But there's like stuff coming in House of the Dragon based on the books unless yeah. they make a change which they won't I feel like some of the Star Wars stuff is like that which is obviously good marketing yeah. if you could just hop in and watch Mandalorian and I think a lot of people did and liked it yeah I think that's true you know what I mean where like if you're a Star Wars head you like the ties that are there but you don't have to know the ties yeah I'm still digging Andor as well yeah I haven't started that either 
Oh my god. Yeah, I know my brain. I just need like a weekend. In my weekends, I've been gone or floating around. Like yeah. I need daytime. Sit down, watch some shit. I have a hard time watching TV during the day. Right really? on the week during the week, it seems like I oh, should be during, doing something else. Yeah, that, I'm the same, and I am doing like bullshit every once in a while. Like I think I watched the Andor, the first three episodes of Andor, in a morning because I wanted to get a whole head of spoilers and stuff, and I yeah, didn't have chill. anything specific to I had to do. Yeah, that's but, not, yeah, that's the mood I need to. Um, this weather helps. That's why I kind of like like gloomy weather. Not that it's gloomy here, but like fall weather. Fall weather, yeah. Because yeah. then you just like feel like a personal excuse to sit on the couch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like 80 out, and you're like, fuck, yeah. dude, I should go do some shit. But also when it was 116 out, I felt like sitting yeah. on the couch as well, and that's what I did. I mean, I always feel like sitting on the couch. It's just whether it's justified. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, to to just address the, the, the specifics of this, um, studies show that faster-paced music tends to improve athletic performance when a person engages in low to moderate level exercise either by increasing distance traveled pace or repetitions completed for example a 2006 study 2006 study that looked at the effect of music on selection of treadmill speed found that while listening to fast-paced music participants strangely enough increased their pace and distance traveled without becoming more tired yeah, I mean, that's where, like, Soul Cycle and Peloton and stuff just fucking crush it, right? Like, right. Like, if they're smart, and I assume they are, I haven't really, I've only taken one of those classes in person, I've never used Peloton, but they have a DJ or the teacher picks perfect songs that have the beats per minute per pedal that you're trying to get at, and then obviously, if you have the beats per minute are high, your pedal's going to be high, and you're going to be on pace, on beat, if you have any kind of rhythm, and you're going to work harder. That, yeah. Yeah. You Seems just simple. Yeah, you just kind of, it's in the same way that your your heart rate it tends to track with right with music tempo right not perfectly but no, it's yeah. influenced by yeah if you're sitting right here like it says 120 to 130 you're kind of in like zone two yeah. cardio and then your fucking heart's going to catch up to that because your legs are pumping at that yeah um in 2010 a study led by somebody whose name i can't pronounce states that music can improve athletic performance in two ways it can either delay fatigue or increase work capacity and i would say that it probably does both according yeah, I was to the say study those kind of seem the, hand in hand. the effects of music lead to higher than expected levels of endurance power productivity or strength i agree and uh, that that's i'm mean, certainly have experienced that but I, I you know experienced watching that i don't know how many times that's ever happened to me as a person yeah i wonder if you have to feel it for it to have an effect yeah and and i think this is a separate from from being or feeling like you're in the zone sure and I've had that more on training days that, than I ever have on meet days. I uh, I think I've talked about it in the past too, like flow state or in the zone. I've, I don't know if I've really even had that lifting. Like I had it, I had it in basketball where I literally felt like I was in the matrix. Yeah, like th- things are slow. The ball's moving slow. I could predict shit. Like it was crazy. And we talked about it. I think with a, a guest as well back in the yeah, day. Yeah, back, back in the, one of the early episodes. Yeah, some of the psychological stuff where like. I think a certain level of like mastery has to come and then obviously like how you put yourself in there and like I've only really felt that in basketball I think maybe art here and there or playing music mm-hmm. playing music maybe but I don't know if I've ever done it in, in lifting because it's just like so stop and go yeah and so kind of floaty anyways maybe on maybe on meet day I don't know we're like uh, yeah I wonder with music if these things can happen without you knowing I think they probably do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, like, people might just like our gym because the music's loud and it's whatever, where if you walk into a commercial gym and Katy Perry's playing, like, at a very, like, annoyingly loud thing where mm-hmm. it's not it's not too loud, it's, like, not quiet enough. Like, on this scale, like, we like to keep our music at maybe 6, 7, 8 out of 10, right? Like, it's loud, you notice it, but it's good energy, but it's, you don't have to scream. But, like, a commercial gym plays it at, like, a 3 or 4, where it's too... It's too loud to be, like, not noticeable, uh-huh. but it's not quiet uh, enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I'm at a commercial show, I'm playing my shit at, like, a two, because people are in headphones anyways. Right. But their shit's, like, just loud enough to be annoying, but not loud enough to get you going, I guess. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, and I fucking hate that. That's the most annoying volume for me. Yeah, we n- not quite, it's just, just background noise that isn't, it's and you can- too loud a background noise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I hate that. And it's shit music. I get it. Well, if you would like to uh, to sample what we actually use in the gym here with regularity, we're going to throw 
couple of our playlists on the uh, uh, show notes for this episode. Oh, I meant to, I keep meaning to tell you, there's, you have a playlist in your Spotify called Feel Good or Feeling yeah. Good or something like yeah. that. Uh, check that. There is a Joe Rogan e- episode at the end of that that I think probably is not what you intended. Oh, in there? Yeah, yeah. probably just slipped in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can get that out before we post this. The up. feel good, I fucking, um, I forgot what happened, but I think I was flying Boston to L.A. Mm-hmm. and uh, there was like thirty delays, but all the delays happened when I'm on the fucking tarmac. So I think I sit in Boston, switch planes around this and that 20 times, and I'm a pretty calm dude in general. It takes very uh-huh. little anymore for, like, my patience is pretty good nowadays. It used to be the opposite. But, like, the regular stuff, you know, I'm not the I'm not the guy going to go bitch and mm-hmm. try to get a fucking free alcohol voucher or something. So I'm just, like, chilling. Okay, okay, okay. And so I think the plane's delayed. Then it switches planes, or so you're running up and down Boston, Logan, whatever airport. Then we get on that thing, and then I think we're on the tarmac for, like, an hour. I'm like, all right, this is starting to piss me off. I already got a five-hour flight ahead of me, whatever. Right. Then I think we land in LAX, and I think I'm sitting on that tarmac for like two and a half hours. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? And now I'm like, okay. You know, so I'm like, I better listen to some music or I'm about to punch somebody, you know? And then I think I built that playlist so I didn't punch somebody. Because <laughs> it was literally probably, yeah, like two and two-hour delays on both sides sitting in that shit seat. Oh, my God. Yeah. If it was in the airport, whatever, right? I'll yeah. Go to the bar or figure it out. Yeah. On that thing, that started to get me pissed off. I'm trying to delete the Joe Rogan now, if I can find it. So we'll put the, we'll put that up for you. Uh, other than that, I think we're gonna call the game on this one, just in deference to my voice, and hopefully I will sound better in our next episode, which we're not gonna record today because apparently I have a water main busted at home. So uh, on to repairs. Um, ladies and gentlemen, brand new episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Appreciate you so so much. Join Discord if you want. Fifty percent facts dot com to get there. Three sb dot co for all your clothing needs. Um, I'm Sam Mike. Everyone will find me. Yeah, we still got some sweet hoodies and and sweatpants going right now. A lot of other stuff is sold out. New stuff coming in relatively soon. Don't wait for it. Grab these hoodies. Uh, I am at the Jimmy D on all the social media. This show is fifty percent facts. Where percent is a word and fifty is just numbers. Fifty percent facts is a Spreaker Prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network. And we'll talk to you Friday.